Alright, welcome back everybody to Let's Play Skyrim with me. And MCM has just registered one new menu. Lovely. Anyway, so. Last time, we killed a dragon. And upon killing the dragon, we absorbed its soul and discovered, therefore, that Claudius is in fact dragonborn, according to the Nords, and apparently according to the Greybeards as well. So, now, however, we've also been, we've got, we've got two tasks essentially ahead of us now. We have to, ah, I'll get to this in a second. We have to deliver an axe to the Jarl Ulfric of Windhelm. The Jarl of Whiterun sided with the Empire. I am to inform Jarl Ulfric Stormcloak of this decision. Now, uh, we don't have a choice in the matter because we've kind of been told by General Tullius to do whatever Balgriff says, essentially. And uh, so we have to go deliver this message, or this axe, or whatever. In spite the fact that Claudius thinks it's a very silly, silly idea to just declare your intentions like that to your enemy, uh, when we could be using the element of surprise to attack Ulfric himself. But no, apparently that's what Balgriff wants to do, so that's what we're going to have to do, which means we're going to have to go to Windhelm, the capital of the Stormcloaks, and hope that Ulfric doesn't decide to have our head chopped off or something. So... There we go. And uh, in addition to that, we need to go to the Monastery of High Hrothgar because we've been summoned by the Greybeards. However, we're going to do that in a bit. First, we need to deliver this axe because Claudius has his orders and his orders come first as far as he's concerned. Uh, everything else is secondary. We also have Lydia still with us now, because we have been made a Thane of Whiterun, and we, as a result, have a house car in the form of Lydia, who is, well, basically sworn to carry all my useless crap by oath, which is magnificent. So there you go. Anyway, so yeah, this, um, the astute among you will have noticed there is another additional quest, there we go, on here called Dragon Hunt. An Imperial courier named Theoden Bien has requested I speak to Lurius Leori at the Bannered Mare in Whiterun as soon as possible. Uh, now, unfortunately, this did actually happen. In between recordings, a courier ran up to me and was like, you need to go visit Theoden Bien in Whiterun. This is part of a quest mod called Worm's Tooth, which I have installed. And uh, I didn't realize it was going to start this soon, and honestly, the courier running up to me while I was doing sort of things like crafting and stuff in between the videos caught me a bit off guard, and unfortunately didn't get a chance to record it. But... Suffice to say, we've got to go meet this Lurius Liori fellow, because he wants a word with us, apparently. So, there's that as well. What have I done in the meantime? Well, Claudius has spent a couple of days at the Bandit Mare, resting and recuperating, after about a week of just solid running around and fighting and stuff like that, because he felt like he deserved it. And, uh... As a result, actually, he's, uh... Let's have a look at Pumping Iron. People are requesting to have a look at this, actually. Um... His current training is still way up at 4.5, which is quite a lot. But his body weight has now increased to 15. So he started off at 10, it's now 15, so he's gained 5 points, essentially, in body weight. Um, which is pretty uh, impressive, really, actually, considering he's not been going for that long. So yeah, anyway, he spent a couple of days resting, drinking, and uh, that sort of thing. And well, now we're about to leave. It's like 7 o'clock in the morning-ish. Probably closer to 8 o'clock in the morning-ish now. And we're on about on our way, about to leave Whiterun and head to Windhelm to deliver this message. Uh, before we go, I am, I think, going to go and speak to this Theoden Bien fellow. No, sorry, Louis Leori. Theoden Bien was the courier. Um, yeah, as you can see, I've crafted up a bunch of my stuff. This Imperial Armour is now fine. The, my weapons should be now fine. Yeah, the short sword is fine. Fortunately, I couldn't cra craft up any more than that, despite me having a bunch of perks, but never mind. Um, so let's go find out what this gentleman has to say. Oh, yeah, before I do that, actually, uh, I'm going to talk about mods, because you guys apparently love to hear me talk about mods so very much. Um, but I'm going to do it anyway, because I, I feel like it's necessary to update people on what mod setup I'm using and that sort of thing, because apparently nobody bothers to read the bloody descriptions anyway, so 
Um, if you don't want to listen to me talking about mods for about five minutes out of the total hour long or whatever this view, these videos usually are, uh, then fine, by all means skip ahead. But for the rest of you, um, stuff that's changed since last we played. Uh, I have installed a couple of mods. I installed lock picking overhaul, which I did mention in the last video actually very briefly, but I didn't really get a chance to demonstrate it at all. Uh, but I do have lock picking overhaul installed. I um, which means I can now bash locks essentially in theory, as long as it's working properly. Anyway, I think it's working properly because I have another character I was testing the mods out with, um, and it seemed to be working totally fine. So anyway, I have the the lock picking overhaul finally installed. I have a mod called The Choice Is Yours, which basically is a little dialogue mod that alters the dialogue slightly in conversations and allows us to basically just turn down quests, because uh, unfortunately this game sometimes has, has an annoying habit of basically kind of forcing quests on you without you being able to kind of have any say in the matter. Um, and then you, you end up with a journal full of cluttered quest rubbish that you're not interested in doing, like for example, visit the Shrine of Azura. Um, you know, speak with Viama at the Bard's College, you know, find Kesh at the Perry Outch, right? All this garbage, basically, that gets stuck in your journal. Basically, this mod allows you to not, allows that to basically not happen, uh, because you can sort of turn down quests and stuff. It's very simple, but I like the idea. I also have Immersive Creatures installed, because a lot of people were requesting that, and I had a look at it, and I tested it out for a while, and it's pretty good. I like it. Um, if you're interested in what settings I have, it's mostly the defaults, however, I do have... I did tweak a few things. I have the, the, the version preset set to purist, because I don't flip in want dinosaurs and all sorts running around the place, because, yeah, I, I've, I've not enjoyed a lot of monster mods for Skyrim previously, because they had loads of really daft stuff in them. Uh, but so I've got the purist mode set on, so it's all totally, totally law friendly within reasonable limits anyway. Although I did go to advanced and I did enable Dwarven Mechanical Dragons. Because I think Dwarven Mechanical Dragons are absolutely hilarious and they're awesome. And they, frankly, they totally fit. I don't see why the dwarves wouldn't make a mechanical dragon. I mean, if, if you were a Dwemer, you know, craftsman, mm, engineer or whatever, wouldn't, what, wouldn't you want to make a mechanical dragon? I would. So anyway, they're in there. Now, the difficulty for them is the default, which is medium. They have advanced perks, which means they have advanced skills, and I've disabled dragon souls. We won't be absorbing any dragon souls from the mechanical dragons because, well, they're not actual dragons. So we shouldn't be absorbing any souls from them. So anyway, that's basically all that is. That's all the stuff I've tweaked for that. Um, in addition to that, I have a mod called Timing is Everything which is a mod that basically allows you to customise when certain quests and quest lines start. Because obviously a lot of quests in this game are triggered by your character's level, and some things like, for example, Dragonborn, uh, are triggered depending on what part of the main quest you're at. And basically this mod allows you to customise exactly when you want those quests and, and quest lines to sort of trigger. So I haven't changed much with it. I altered the Dawnguard vampire attack, so they will occur at now a now higher level. Um, because dealing with that one vampire attack in solitude was, well, a little bit much really at my level. So I've, I've raised the bar, the bar a bit for those, they won't be appearing for a little while now, again. And I have also, I have also changed when Dragonborn starts as well, I have changed it, it will no longer start immediately after this is an old visiting the Greybeards on their mountain. Imperials. It will start at a different point. I'm not going to tell you when it will start, because that would spoil it a bit, but suffice to say, I have changed it. So it will now start at a different point. And uh, that's kind of it, I think. Oh, no, 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 it's not it. I also installed interesting NPCs. Because a lot of people were requesting that as well. I gave it, I checked it out a bit. I, um, some of the NPCs in it I thought were a bit naff, some of them I thought were really, really good, and on that basis I thought it would be a shame to not install the mod, because some of the NPCs in that mod are really cool. So there you go, I've got that installed again, I mean, again, I've got that installed now, and we'll probably be encountering a few of those NPCs. And, um, yeah, that is literally it, other than I think, oh, right, yeah, I have, uh, what's it called, Predator Vision installed, because one of my other characters is a Khajiit, and I saw no reason to disable Predator Division while playing as Claudius here in the, in the Let's Play. So there you go. 
I have that installed basically. So that is all the mod stuff out of the way. I'll try. I, mean, I probably would have put an annotation in the video or something like that, so people can skip ahead away from the mod stuff. Because people don't. Some people don't enjoy listening to me talk about mods. Uh, I don't really care, honestly, if you don't enjoy me talking about mods. Modding the game is one of the things I enjoy most about playing Skyrim. So obviously, it's something I'm going to comment on every now and again. My mods and what changes I've made to them and stuff like that, because you know it's one of the things I enjoy doing. Modding the game. So, you know, screw you, basically, if you don't like it. Um, I will put links or annotations up so you can skip it if you need to be, but I'm not going to stop doing it, essentially, is what I'm saying. Anyway. Right, sorry about the brief pause there. I had to check something was working. And it is. So that's all good. Anyway, so let's go speak to this fellow over here, Lurius Liori. Mind if I have a seat? Oh god, she's going to send the yes. barmaid over in a second now, isn't she? Never mind. Ah, you made it. I was beginning to think you were never going to show up. Really? Well, it, it's only been a day. Uh, I received your message. Sounds like you're having trouble with a dragon. The problem is straightforward enough, I suppose. A dragon has been attacking settlements throughout the holds. Contingents of guards have been sent after it, but the damn thing has so far managed to evade all our efforts. Oh, but where are my manners? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Lurius Leor, with the East Empire Company. I see, and why does the East Empire Company care about dragon attacks especially? How shall I put it? Dragon attacks are very bad for trade. They're also very bad for settlements throughout the holds, hence a commonality. We've been cooperating with the Jarls to pool our resources together towards finding a solution to this issue. I'm sure the collective bounty of 10,000 gold on this dragon should stir enough sword waivers into action should my plan fail. <laughs> oh boy. 10,000 gold, huh? Um, I'm a little bit distracted by the fact that these, these um, honey nut things here seem to be slightly possessed. Uh, but uh, they keep twitching occasionally <laughs> by themselves. But anyway, what, what kind of plan did you have in mind exactly? I know of some mercenaries with exceptional talents. They've worked with us before, and they'll undoubtedly work for us again. For the right amount of coin, of course. Alright. Tell me who they are and I'll track them down for you. I think I'm motivated here purely by the 10,000 gold bounty. <laughs> uh, that's 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 a ridiculous amount of money and I'm not going to turn that down at all in a hurry. Although I'm not going to be like, I could take on the dragon by myself because I clearly can't um, at all in the slightest at this point. You saw what happened with the, with that with the, with the one dragon outside Whiterun just now. It murdered half the city guard. <laughs> so, alright, so... Tell me who they are, and I'll track them down for you at some point. I'm still waiting for information on the whereabouts of the others, but for now, I want you to find Aether. He's a Redguard warrior from Hammerfell. He used to be Alakir. We'll need his skill with the blade, that's for damn sure. Last thing I knew, he was taking on a group of Forsworn southwest of Markarth, a place they call Hagrock Redoubt. Sounds like a dangerous place. Find him, and tell him to meet me here. I should have the whereabouts of the next mercenary by then. You want a drink? No, I don't say the bugger off. <laughs> right. Okay, so I have to go recruit some mercenaries for the East Empire Company as well, apparently. Oh, good grief. Is this going to be a problem now? Now I'm dragonborn. What do you think, Lydia? You don't think anything, do you? You, you generally have a habit of not thinking anything at all. Never mind. Yeah, so I'm the Dragonborn now, apparently, and and uh, apparently that means I need to help everyone. I have stuff to do, people. I'll get on with this East Empire Company business as soon as I can, but not now. Anyway, so uh, let's get kitted up. Backpack, ooh, uh, shield helmet, and uh, I still don't have any more blasted crossbow bolts, I'm afraid. Oh, look, yeah, I made a cooking pot, actually, as well. I crafted a cooking pot in between uh, this chapter and the last chapter. 
and there it is on my backpack as you can see so it's very small I thought it'd be a bit bigger than that but anyway so I have a cooking pot now which means we can when we set up a campfire I can also set up a cooking pot and cook things which is lovely so anyway off we go uh, let's see what route do I want to take here Uh, there's two ways we can go, isn't there? There's we can go this way through the snowy area, or we can go this way through the slightly less snowy area. <laughs> I'm leaning towards the slightly less snowy area, frankly, because uh, I don't know. I don't want to catch hypothermia or run the risk of catching hypothermia, frankly. So I'm thinking, let's go this way. Hopefully this way as well will be less patrolled by storm cloaks. I don't want to run into too many of them on my way. Really. We also need to get to Iverstead as, as well because we need to go speak to the Greybeards. But like I said, that's not exactly top priority right now because we have our orders. However, mm, I was going to say, once we've delivered the axe, maybe we could pop down to Iverstead and go to High Rothgar, but actually once we've delivered the axe, we probably want to get straight back to Balgraf as soon as possible uh, to tell him what Ulfric said, essentially. Um, that depends, I suppose, on the outcome. If Ulfric decides not, it decides to, like, uh, what was it, if he keeps the axe, then they're at peace. So if he keeps the axe, then we'll head off to High Rothgar because we won't be in too much of a hurry. If he doesn't keep the axe, then we better leg it back to White Run as fast as possible, by the sounds of it. So that's the plan. Very well. That, ladies and gents, is what we're going to do. My loading screens, by the way, I mean, I might be speaking too soon here, but my loading screens have gotten quite um, snappy, actually. Earlier on this LP, I kind of complained about them very being quite long, but uh, I don't know, I think. It's, Probably since I stopped over underclocking my uh, graphics card, um, they, they they've just become a lot shorter. Strange, but there it is. So anyway, a lot of people, some people were suggesting it was to do with scripts and stuff, but apparently not the case because I've only installed more scripts since then and it's actually gotten shorter. So there you go. Gosh, I am moving slowly. How much? How much gold do I have? Three thousand nine hundred and forty. That's not an insignificant amount. I could buy a horse with it, feasibly, but Claudius does not like horses and unfortunately I don't have any sort of follower mods installed at the minute, uh, which me, which would mean Lydia would have to be running along behind and that would be just dreadfully awkward, so I don't know. Anyway, I think we'll just walk for now. Is that Bleak Falls Barrow over there? Just off in that direction. Yeah, I think it might be. Yes, I got a lot of comments about the the this. I don't have anything better to talk about them, I'm afraid. But I got a lot of comments about the the doors in the barrows, the puzzle doors with the claw keys and stuff like that. And uh, I got a lot of people telling me that uh, the purpose of the doors isn't to uh, isn't to keep people out. It's to keep the Draugr locked in. That's why the puzzles are so easy. And, uh... And... Uh, I'm not convinced. I'm sorry, I'm just not convinced, guys. I'm really not. It do that just sounds daft to me. And I'll tell you why. I mean, A, if someone at Bethesda said that was the case, frankly, I think that's nonsense and that's just Bethesda kind of, you know, covering their asses for having such terrible, terrible puzzles in their game. But, um, see, the, the reason it doesn't make much sense to me is because we know for a fact that the ancient Nords built those places. The ancient Nords. Not anyone who came after the ancient Nords. It was the ancient Nords themselves who built those barrows. So, I kinda, it kind of begs the question. Hello. Stabity stab stab stab. Yeah, as a, oh, also as a side note. I, uh, let me just double check the, ah, oh, no, 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 wait, no, it is meant to be on Adept, Adept isn't it, derp, uh, forget that brief moment of stupidity, um, although I'm thinking of possibly raising it to expert, potentially, now that we have a follower, 
but I don't know. In any case, um, it depends. It depends how we how we get on. Uh, I could just kill the wolf pretty easily there, but then again, we could run into a drogger or something up the road, which proceeds to murder the pair of us. So uh, there you go. In any case, what on earth is going on over here? Spriggan. A, a really a Spriggan. This doesn't. This isn't a particularly forested area, unless he was in, living in those trees up there, I suppose. Never mind this. Hunter took care of him pretty handily. Uh, bit of a badass, aren't you? Look, he's got a scar and everything. Well, they did kill his friend, but I'm not going to loot because that'd just be mean. And uh, anyway, so as I was saying, I'm not convinced of this whole barrow door thing. It seems it seems a bit daft, and I'll tell you why. Because if anything, those barrows. I mean, I know that the ancient Norsemen, you know, the well, you know, the Vikings and whatnot built barrows and things, and I think even the old Anglo-Saxons and stuff probably built barrows as well, but these barrows actually, because of the way they're set up and they're set to house, you know, made to house dragon priests and stuff, it actually seems to me to have more in common with, uh, Lydia, come on, get a move on, honestly, seems to have more in common with the Egyptian pyramids than anything else, actually, because all the Draugr in... These, pla these these places were once the servants of the 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 dragon priest or the Nordic leader that's buried there, you know, and they agreed to be mummified basically on the, the their leader's death so that they could continue serving them in undeath, um, where they perform rituals in the barrows and try and keep the dragon priests and stuff in their lich-like state. Ah, hello. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Get the hot keys all mixed up, I'm afraid. Twang. And down you go, and down you go. Those guys died a little bit easy, but eh, whatever. Like I said, I could uh, I could up the difficulty now, and then we'll run into something which will completely and utterly murder me. And these are just wolves at the end of the day. I shouldn't, in theory, be having too much too much bother with them. I suppose. But anyway, ooh, the texture on my shield's gone a bit weird. Yeah, anyway, um, yeah, I like this, by the way. Like the immersive creatures mod, it adds these red furred wolves, which I think is kind of neat because it reminds me of Blood Moon. Because on Salt Time in the Blood Moon expansion, you've got red wolves as well as like dark black coloured wolves. So that's kind of cool. That's what it immediately, it immediately reminded me of when I saw it, but anyway, so... As I was saying, yeah, these barrows, they kind of remind me of the ancient Egyptian pyramids, and the thing you have to remember about the ancient Egyptian pyramids, and here's where the whole... Uh, the doors and stuff are built to imprison the dragon priests so that they couldn't get out thing falls to pieces, because the pyramids, if you recall, were built by the pharaohs who were going to be buried in them. Uh, assuming this is the same case with the... Dragon Priest Barrows, as well as all the other Barrows, like Bleak Falls Barrows. What do you get lost, honestly? I'm trying to make a point here. Stupid wildlife. Anyway. Good grief, there's a lot of them. I mean, there would be. Wolves do hunt in packs, after all. But, uh, anyway. Lydia, could you please maybe take care of them next time I'm in the middle of a m inner monologue? Uh... I have more, more important things to worry about, you see. And that's what you're here for, you're my bodyguard and all that. We should hang a bit closer, by the way, instead of lagging behind like that, but anyway. So yeah, like I said, you have to remember that the ancient Egyptian pharaohs, they built their own pyramids. They built their own tombs while they were alive for themselves to be buried in. So why would the dragon priests build themselves prisons for themselves to be imprisoned in after death. That seems utterly stupid. Like, it doesn't make even the remotest bit of sense. Why would they imprison themselves? That's the last thing they want to do. If Especially if they're going to all the trouble of keeping themselves undead in lich form after they've been interred in the barrow. You know, by their Draugr subject, you know. Just seems utterly... Okay, daft. That's what I'm saying. Seems completely silly. Plus, you know... This is quite apart from the fact that... Oh, I see you're shooting people with your arrow, bow and arrows, okay. Um, 
It's quite apart from the fact that there are Draugr on both sides of the doors in pretty much every barrier you go into. So the whole it's meant to keep the Draugr inside thing doesn't make sense from that perspective either. Hello, it's valuable. You know what, I'm just gonna ugh, duck in here a second and turn my headphone volume down a bit because the music is really loud anyway. <sighs> Still don't have any crossbow bolts by the way. I haven't got the perk that allows me to make them and I can't find a single blasted smith that has any for sale. Where did he go? Oh, he's over there. Don't, no, this isn't a case of kill, you, kill them if you have to, Lydia. Will you just kill them right now? Out there, out, right, outright. Just go on, get. Shoot, skedaddle. Come on. Ugh, my aim is all off. Oh, I'm aiming too high, that's the problem. There we go. Kind of nice, this short bow, but I do honestly prefer the crossbows, like I said. Uh, Lydia, there's, you're, being, you're being chased. Why am I not using my shield, game? I did not give you permission to unequip my shield. Ow, ow, ouch, ouch, ouch. Alright, I was about to see that. No, this is a bit easy, but... Uh... <laughs> At least I was avenged. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, God, I didn't save for ages either, did I? Unless I quit saved without remembering. Nope. Oh, dear. Well, I shall return when I've reached the bridge again. Be right back. Oh, wait. Here's another point, actually, by the way. If you were, you were thinking of saying in the comments, like, uh, well, you know, the barrows can't have been built by the Dragon Priests then. The barrows must have been built by people wanting to imprison the Dragon Priests there. Um, okay, but I don't think that much makes much... Go away. Go away. That doesn't seem to make much sense to me either, considering that if, if, if the barrows were built by people who hated the Dragon Cult... Why are there so many dragon statues and dragon world walls and stuff like that in those barrows? That doesn't make sense either. So, uh, and why bother giving such lavish burials to people who were the enemy, essentially? So, no, I, I'm not convinced. I'm pretty sure those places were built by the dragon priests and Bethesda just suck at making puzzles and their claw door things are a bit of a logical, just... Uh, hiccup on their part, frankly. I think that's the most likely solution here, honestly. I mean, the blasted claw doors make no sense anyway, even if we assume, for the sake of argument here, that it is meant to imprison the people inside. It still makes no blasted sense. Why would you put the combination for the lock on the key? If you're going to put the combination of the lock on the key, you might as well not have a combination at all. You might as well just have a key. So that doesn't make much sense either. So there you go. Anyway, rant officially over. I will speak no more on the subject. <laughs> too, too, much, too, too much of your relief, I'm sure. Get over here, Lydia. Come on. Seriously, woman. You're turning out to be more of a hassle than a benefit here, honestly. Never mind. Anyway. Right, we're approaching the bridge again. And I have actually noticed something in the meantime, which is a bit silly of me. I completely forgot to um, bring any food. <laughs> oh dear. I'm such a numpty, honestly. Right. Uh, on that note. You bastards! One time I actually need your your meat. Uh, you, you run away. Shut up, you. Come on, let's just go. So I don't really have any bottles to refill at the river, so... Ugh. Right. Valtheim Towers discovered. I'm curious that, by the way, guys are attacking on sight. I thought normally they actually asked you for a, a toll or something. Not sure why that is, but anyway. 
one, you lot. How about me? Also, health potions. I think I did. I I think I bought some health potions before I left White Run. Yeah, I did. Good. Lock picks. Steel broadsword that I don't need. Good. Don't mind me just looting away while Lydia's getting shot at. Ah, right. There's the blasted deer. You know what? <laughs> yes! Remind me to go pick that up later. Whoa! Get out of my face! Uh oh. Are you using a dagger? Really, man? You're a bandit chief. Got a very swish cloak and all, but really a dagger? Is that how you guys roll? God, I'm mucking at my hotkeys again, sorry about that. Ah, there we go. This distance is a little bit tricky, especially with Sky Reese archery. I think as a general rule, this range, I want to try and get the target within that top triangle of the crosshair. There we go, that seems to do the job. Now then. I think I might up the difficulty to expert, actually. Now we've got Lydia, who's apparently massacred everyone else while I was dealing with that one archer. Um, Lydia, where are you? Oh, hello. Oh, stab, stab, stab. Down you go. Remind me to loot him as well. Where did he go? Did he fall in the river? No, he's just on the river bank. Good. Lydia, where have you gone? Ugh. Gosh, I have to babysit my own house, Carl. This is just absurd. But forget about Lydia. Let's do a bit of looting. You, there was something over there. <sighs> oh, there you are. Where were you? Where were you? Where? What have you been up to? Hey. Eh? Stale baked potatoes. Damn. I love that wine though. I already have a woodcutter's axe. So I don't have to worry about that. Health potions. Thank you very much. Clothes don't need water skin. Yes, finally. You know what? I might might as well take both. Awesome. Are they full? Do they already have water in them, or are they empty? Stand in water to refill. Yeah, I need to refill it. Well, I'll do that in a minute then. Hmm. Brilliant. I was I, thought I was I was busy collecting ingredients for just bloody ages in in the hopes of being able to blast it well craft one of those things and now I just randomly find two of them in a in a cupboard somewhere. Ridiculous. Anyway. These don't have useful things in them. Ah, like iron ore for instance. I think it's Skyree that changes it, but in yeah in Skyree the barrels have totally different things in them. So they do in the vanilla game. Did I already have a pickaxe? I think I already did. Yeah, be gone. Um, no. Nah. I was going to say, maybe we should have a spare that could give to Lydia, but no. Ooh, iron ore. Nice. We have in that. Right, good. More iron ore is always nice, because I finally figured out as well. Thanks for all 10 million of you, by the way, that commented on that video and said, Oh, by the way, to make steel, you use charcoal and iron. Yeah, I appreciate it, but I'd already figured it out by that point, so, yeah. Thanks for that. Uh, but yeah, so, the, the Sky remakes it more realistic, as in it's no longer this fantastical mixture of... Ah, hello, speaking of. It's fantastical... Damn it! It's no longer this fantastical mixture of corundum and iron that makes steel. It's actually steel and charcoal, which... Uh, it's not like modern steel, because modern steel is made with coke. Which is not literally Diet Coke or anything like that. It's it's, it's a substance of, similar to coal. Um, but obviously, in the ancient world, it was made probably using charcoal.
Aha! Magic things. And a pair of elven boots. Which I have no interest in using. Because I've always thought the elven boots looked kind of goofy. But, uh, whatever. Staff of the Familiar. Fair enough. Anything behind there? Nope. What do we have up here? Ash Longbow of Embers. I will take it because it's magical. And worth something. Not sure if I'll use it though, honestly. I might actually. Now I think about it, I might use it. It's pretty good at long range sniping like we were doing a bit of up there. Yeah, it's all under 50. If it's worth more than 50, it's worth taking. So yeah, I do one out, why not? I am arrow left. It's ridiculous. Um Yeah, I may assign that to um yeah, the position my Imperial shortbow is in, actually. Because that would probably be more useful. Because the crossbow is better at medium close range stuff. The longbow would have been useful for shooting across this gorge like earlier. So. Um. What on earth am I looking for? There it is. Steel arrows. And let's get you hotkeyed as well. There we go. Meantime, I will take that. Those, that, and that's pretty much it. Interesting, of worthy of note, by the way, is that the. Oh, I don't know, actually, that's quite big. I don't know if it's still not. possibly not big enough, I don't know. I don't think the longbow's in this game. I don't know, it is pretty big. Uh, anyway, I don't think the longbow's in this game really do constitute longbow's, ironically enough. Mind you, I think it's been enlarged quite a bit compared to the vanilla game. The vanilla game's bows weren't that big. And also it's green. That's very strange. Like, it's, li it's literally been painted green. <laughs> How odd. Is that some sort of weird texture bug, or is it literally just meant to be like that? A green longbow. Who knows? But anyway. Yeah, certainly the longbows in the vanilla game aren't, technically speaking, longbows. Because a longbow is pretty much only defined by the fact that it's slightly taller than its user. A bow, basically, that is slightly taller than its user is a longbow. And, uh... This is not... I don't think slightly taller than its user. It looks quite big, mind you. I don't know, it's difficult to tell, but anyway. Almost forgot about you. People were about to type at me in the comments about that. You were! I know you were! You, you, you there on your keyboard typing away. Oh my god, you forgot to loot the bandit leader. No, 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 no. I was one step ahead of you. The whole time, I was just teasing you. It was a test. Now then, where did this other fellow end up? He, he dropped down here somewhere. Ah, there he is. Fur hood, yep. Gold, arrows, lovely. Ah, yes, and there's this deer over here. And another bandit, apparently. Probably fell in the water and got washed down here. I mean, look, Kinnereth, fair enough. Apparently, I picked up something that I didn't want to, didn't I? There is it. I don't need that, do I? I think that, that must have been what I picked up. Apparently, by the way, I can attach um, amulets like the religious amulets, like the ones of Kinnereth or Talos or whatever, I can attach them. There we go, venison. Nice. I can attach those to uh, my backpack, funnily enough. And I can get an additional bonus from another amulet by attaching it to my backpack. Also, that, did, that didn't count as me getting wet, did it? No. Good. Like I said, it's only if, it's only if you're actually submerged that the game counts you as being wet from all wading through rivers, strangely. Uh, probably a limitation of the game engine and all that. So anyway. Weird. Bright green longbow. I don't know. Anyway, it's pretty useful, so... There we go, venison shop. Num num num. We have some food, finally. <sighs> Excellent. And I'm going to quick save. Lest I forget to. Later on. Ah, you there. Time to test out the longbow. I just, I keep hitting three to equip my longbow, and it's actually four. 
because I was playing a different character with the keys defined differently. Pretty sure that's what the problem was. Oh, you little bastard. Come here. No, I quite like stalking through the trees like this. It's just a shame that vegetation doesn't actually contribute to your sneaking. It doesn't contribute to your visibility is what I mean. Where the hell did that dip? There he is. You little... Oh. Oh, I'm so going to kill you. There we go. Char grilled venison. <laughs> uh, and a random. Oh, part of the bandit outlaw, apparently. Rolled all the way down here. How peculiar. And of course, because of the way the game's set up, I can actually loot this tomato from him. <laughs> oh, strange. Strange, strange, strange. In any case. Venison. Thank you. You know what? I'll take the deer hide as well. I think I'm going to see about making a bigger tent. I have two small tents, both of which I'm carrying. I didn't give them to, to Lydia because I could just see myself wandering off into the wilderness without Lydia for whatever reason and then forgetting that she had the tents and then I'd be stuck. So I decided to hold on to the, tent, to the tents for now. Um, but yeah, I need to see about getting a bigger one now we have a follower because that way there'll actually be enough room for both of us to rest. Of course, I don't need, technically speaking, need it. I can just have Lydia stand outside for the entire night. Um, but it just, I don't know, from an in-character perspective, it makes sense to get a bigger tent. So, yeah, you can see about doing that, which means I'm going to have to collect a bunch more furs and pelts and things. And a bunch more leather as well, because I'm probably going to make a big leather tent and a big fur tent as well. And I don't know what I'll do with the small ones. I'll probably just dump them on Lydia or something. <laughs> oh, it does look so pretty, all this bloody scenery. I love it. It's the Imaginator at work again and... Oh, okay. Another massacred pack of wolves. Come along, no more stops. We need to find our way to solitude. <laughs> oh, it's these idiots again. Look, you, you know you're going the wrong way, right? Peasant. I've had a long journey and paid too much coin on these gifts to be late to Victoria's wedding. Peasant, is it? <laughs> I'm not a bandit, still. Yeah, enjoy your stupid wedding. Indeed, if we ever get there. Yeah, I hope you get torn to pieces by a pack of wolves, quite frankly. well connected merchant with the East Empire Company. The Emperor's cousin, remember? Hopefully these yeah, look, there's a... Guys, there's a signpost right there. I, uh. And lead the way to an audience with the Emperor. You're not headed towards solitude. You're headed towards Windhelm, of all places. That's like the exact opposite of where you want to be going. Ugh, I don't know. Honestly, if you're that stupid, you probably deserve what you get. And what they're getting probably is heads on spikes as soon as they arrive at Windhelm. Oh dear. Hope I don't end up with a head on a spike when I, as soon as I get to Windhelm. And what is? Oh, okay. It's a wolf. I'll be honest, I thought it was a saber cat for a second, because uh, <laughs> of the colour. Uh, I always panic when I see saber cats, they're just un un unbelievably tough. Come on, Lydia. I should really take that bow off you if I can, because I'd rather you were wading into combat, frankly, and not hanging behind shooting things. Your job is to... you're a bodyguard, which means you've got to guard my body, and you're not doing that by han ha hanging around five miles behind me with a bow. Big waterfall. And we're now heading towards East March, I believe, which is pretty much what this vo big volcanic tundra is part of, I think. East March. Anyway, who's this? Random elf? I'm on a pilgrimage to the shrine of Azura, the goddess of twilight. If you Ugh, excuse yep, me. no. no, 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 no. Daedra, want nothing to do with Daedra. Be gone. Not interested. How is the weather? The sun is radiant. Lovely. God, you must be actually getting a bit hot under all that gear, Claudius, in all fairness. 
Oh, it's hot here again. We got yet another heat wave here in uh, jolly old England, unfortunately. And uh, I am boiling right now. And uh, it's, uh, well. What the? Oh. Lydia? Now would be a good time to run. That's not what I said. Oh, I'm so dead. 